Good morning. Uh, today we are having a class on eyelids. Okay. So coming to the today we will start on with anatomy of eyelids. So usually the eyelids are uh, there are two lids. That is, we have upper lid and eye, uh, lower eyelid. And we have eyelashes and eyebrows. These are the appendages or accessory apparatus of our vision. So what are eyelids? Usually these are mobile tissue curtains which covers and protects your eyes. So you should have the eyelids otherwise it will lead to dryness. Then we have a row of lashes. So what is the function of the lashes? Usually this protects from the dust particles. All the dust particles will uh, be protected, will be uh, avoided from entering the eye with the help of these row of lashes. We also have uh, diseases with the lashes which involves uh, loss of lashes which usually happens in vitiligo and Hansen's disease or an extra row of lashes or the lashes which are going and pinching on the eyelids, uh, eye, eye thereby producing abrasions. It also protects from the foreign debris, anything which can enter the eye. So coming from to the embryology. Uh, so how the eyelids are formed? It is formed by the reduplication of the surface ectoderm above and below the cornea. So the surface ectoderm comes uh, in, in front of the cornea. It forms two folds above and below the cornea. And the folds, these folds enlarge so that their margins meet and fuse. Okay. So initially they fuse together. Their margins fuse together. Later they open to form the... Um, conjunctival or palpebral fissure. So the lids are cut off uh, a space which is called the conjunctival sac. You can see the uh, sac which is enclosed between the cornea and the lids. So the upper, upper lid comes from the uh, surface ectoderm above and the lower lid from the surface ectoderm below. And these both fuse together initially and forms the conjunctival sac. So the conjunctival sac is between your eyelids and cornea. Later, this lids uh, separate and forms the lid folds. Okay. So, the folds thus form contain some mesoderm uh, which would form the muscles of the lid and the tarsal plate. So, as we all know, the muscles of the lid consist of orbicularis muscle and um, mullerian muscle. So, these muscles are formed from the, you can see the uh, blue colored tissue which is the mesoderm. So, from this mesoderm, the muscles of the lid and the uh, orbit are forming. So, as I told, initially the lids fuse together, whereas the lids separate after the seventh month of intrauterine life. Okay, that thus before birth itself, the lids separate. Otherwise, it will lead to fusion of the lids and the baby cannot open the lids. So, seventh month of intrauterine life, the lids separate and form two lids, that is upper lids and lower lids. Okay. Coming to the key functions. So, what are the key functions of your lids? First comes your mechanical protection. So, the lids protect from your all anything like environmental pollution, sunlight or something which is coming and going to hit your um, cornea or your eyes. The lids will close. That is the blink reflex, right? The lids will close and it will protect your eyes. Then comes your secretion, distribution and drainage of tears. 
what is meant by secretion distribution? Actually, the lids are having multiple glands, which are called uh, the meibobian glands that are present in the tarsal plate in the lids. Okay, so these will secrete the um, say, uh, sebum or oily secretion of the tear film. So from the meibobian glands, the oily secretions are secreted. The upper lid contains approximately 40 to 50 glands and lower lids is 20 to 25 glands. So these will secrete the sebum or which is the oily layer. Oily layer which comes and spreads over whenever the lid is blinking to spread the tear film over the cornea. So it distributes, right? It distributes the tear film over your cornea and drainage of tears. How is drainage? So whenever your lids are blinking, uh, the tears get pumped into your lacrimal sac. That is done by your orbicularis muscle. Okay. Uh, so, orbicularis muscle is also present over the uh, lids and surrounding the uh, orbit. So, this will pump the tears which will go into the lacrimal sac and drain into the nasolacrimal duct. So, this will also help in drainage of tears. So, it will secrete the mabobian, from the mabobian gland, it will secrete the the um, oily layer, then uh, distribution is by blinking. During blinking, it will spread the tears over your cornea. And finally, it will also help in drainage of tears by pumping action, which will pump into your lacrimal sac. Um, tears and secretion. So, uh, so whatever is happening, so each time the lid blinks and spreads the tear film, it will keep the cornea moist, okay, continuously moist. So, what will happen if your cornea is moist or your lids are open? So, it will go for dryness. Okay, that is happening in lag of thermos. That is in facial palsy. Your lids cannot close properly, right? And hence, the tear film is not properly distributed over your cornea. And hence, uh, your eyes or cornea becomes dry. So, once it becomes dry, all the other things happen like corneal abrasions and followed by infection. Okay, So that is the importance of lids in spreading the tear film over the eyelid, eyes. Okay. Next is blink reflex. So this blink reflex protects from the foreign bodies. As I already told, if something comes near your eyes, your blink reflex will be activated and you will close your eyes, right? So, so that it doesn't allow anything to fall on the cornea because if some abrasion or a foreign body falls on your cornea, then it will go, go on for infection, corneal ulcer or anything else. So, your blink reflex protects your eyes or whatever structures which are inside from the foreign bodies. Coming to the parts of the eyelid. So, what are all the parts you know? First is the orbital portion. Okay. Whichever is above the, that is just below your eyebrows is your orbital portion. And then comes your upper palpebra. You have eyebrows and below the eyebrows, you have orbital portion where you have the orbicularis muscle. And below that, you have upper palpebral furrow. What is furrow? Furrow is a depression, right? So, you have a depression or decrease, de decreased foot. Depressed fold, okay, which is called upper palpebral fusion. Furrow. So below the uh, upper palpebral furrow comes your tarsal portion. So you divide it into orbital portion and tarsal portion of the eyelids. Then whichever in the upper lid is called the upper punctum. What is punctum? It is a just a opening, okay, through which your uh, lacrimal things or a uh, tear film gets drained into your upper punctum and there from the upper punctum it goes into the lacrimal sac and below eyelid lower eyelid contains lower punctum so upper punctum and lower punctum as i already told you will also have openings of the tarsal glands what i told it is meibobian glands right so openings of the meibobian glands are also present in the lid margins those can be seen as uh, pores in the lower lid margins then between the um, uh, lashes and whatever you are having that may be in grand orifices is called as intermarginal strip. You have upper one in the upper lid and one in the lower lid. And as I told, again you have lower palpebral furrow. So coming again, you have uh, eyebrows and below the eyebrow you have upper palpebral furrow which you divide into orbital portion and tarsal portion. 
and you have an opening in the upper lid and lower lid which is upper punctum and lower punctum and between that you have intermarginal strip and there are also openings of the tarsal glands or meibomian glands and then later followed by the lower palpebral furrow so this is the clinical picture so you can see the upper lid and lower lid upper palpebral furrow and lower palpebral furrow and you can also see the lacrimal punctum which is the opening and what is a lacrimal caruncle it is a fold of tissue near the medial area of the eyelid and you have eyelid like medial canthus whichever is near the nose is your medial canthus here is your medial canthus and here is your lateral canthus and you have the opening here which is called as lacrimal punctum which is situated on a mound of tissue that is called lacrimal papilla and this is your lacrimal caruncle and this is your lacrimal fold okay this fold is called as lacrimal fold and uh, what is between the upper lid and lower lid is called is your palpebral fissure okay this is called your palpebral fissure and this is your upper palpebral furrow we saw no the upper palpebral furrow which divides into orbital portion and tarsal portion and here you have lower palpebral furrow okay Com coming to the position of the eyelids so normally the what is the position of the eyelid so normally it is like you see um so normally when the eyelid is open right when the eye is open upper lid covers um about 1/6 of the cornea that is up to 2 mm and lower lid just touches the limbus that is 1 mm why this is important is see you have upper lid which covers 1/6 of the cornea so the whole cornea 1/6 is covered by your upper lid okay and lower lid just touches okay just touches your limbus why is this important means this is important so whenever this it comes down or up to half of the cornea it is covering we call it as ptosis that is upper lid ptosis and when this or something like if it is uh, retracted and your sclera gets exposed we call it as lid retraction that is why normal thing is important so normally it covers upper 2 mm 2 mm of the cornea and lower lid just touches the limbus so once again like uh, when it is coming down we call it as ptosis and when it is retracted that occurs most commonly in thyroid eye disease we call it as lid retraction next is canthic so what is canthus or canthic okay so we have like this is like this in where the upper lid and the lower lid meet is called as the canthus or canthic so we have one in the medial and one in the lateral so the two lids meet together each at medial angle and lateral angle so medial is your inner canthus and lateral is your outer canthus so one more thing is the lateral canthus which is this lateral canthus is usually or in our asians it is 2 mm higher than the medial canthus okay according to this we say so this is a uh, See, usually the medial canthus is two milli lateral canthus is two millimeter higher than the medial canthus. Why is this? According to this, we say whether it is mongoloid gland or anti mongoloid gland. That is why this thing is important. So this two mm, okay. So this two mm, that is lateral canthus, is little bit higher than the medial canthus, approximately two mm. so coming to palpebral aperture as i told what is the palpebral aperture it is the uh, space between the two lids so that is the upper lid and the lower lid the space between this is called the palpebral aperture so it is an elliptical space between the upper lid and the lower lid so you also you have to know the normal dimensions normally when the eye is open in open eyes it meets a uh, vertical and horizontal dimension 10 to 11 mm vertical and 28 to 30 mm horizontal 
So, what is the clinical significance? As I already told, in ptosis, that is when the upper lid comes down, this palpebral aperture will be shortened. And this is important because uh, in blepharophimosis or something, this horizontal aperture will be elongated. So, that is why the palpebral aperture is important. So, it is an elliptical space between the upper lid and lower lid. And in opened eyes, it measures 10 to 11 mm vertically and 28 to 30 mm horizontally. Coming to lid margin. So next is we have to know in detail whatever things are there in the lid margin. Right. So there are many things. The lid margin is about 2 mm broad. See, this is about from here to here, it is 2 mm broad. You see how many structures are there between this just 2 mm. So, according to the punctum, we, punctum, we divide it into two parts. That is, uh, medial, see here is your punctum. We divide this into medial portion and this into lateral portion. So, medial or lacrimal portion. So, what is the difference? This medial or lacrimal portion is rounded and devoid of lashes or glands. You see, there are no lashes or glands in this medial portion. Whereas, in the lateral or ciliary portion, ciliary portion is the other name, okay, lateral portion or ciliary portion. So, it has a rounded anterior border. See, this is the anterior border and a sharp posterior border. Okay, and between this anterior border and posterior border is called your intermarginal strip. So, the lid margin is about 2 mm broad and this punctum divides it into two portions. One is medial portion or lacrimal portion which is rounded and devoid of lashes or glands. And the lateral portion or the ciliary portion which contains rounded anterior border and a sharp posterior border. And between these two is your intermarginal strip. Right. And what is the gray line? So, gray line is between your uh, that's in, between your uh, anterior and posterior border. Okay. So, see, this is your gray line. Uh, why this gray line is important? Because all your uh, surgeries, we divide the plane into anterior and posterior plane. And based on this gray line, we divide into two portions. According, if you go inside that, the lid can be easily separated into muscle plane and uh, glandular plane. And that is the importance of your gray line. Okay. So, in this picture, I think you can easily see the gray line. So, this easily divides into anterior lamella and posterior lamella. So, all your lid surgeries, whichever you are going inside the lid pain, uh, this will be useful. Okay. So, for surgical part of you. So, coming to the cross section, we jo just saw about the lid margin. Now, we are going to see about the cross section. So, this is the cross section. So, uh, we saw about the lid margin, right? Now we are seeing about the cross section. It consists of skin and then comes your and then comes your orbicularis muscle. This is your orbicularis muscle and then comes your mullus muscle and then behind the mullus muscle you have your tarsal plate, levator muscle and mullus muscle. These two are the levator muscle and mullus muscle. Then you have the tarsal plate which has the meibobian glands. This, as I told you, from this meibobian glands only, all your sebum secretions are coming out and into the ear film. And this is the lashes. And uh, here comes your into the eyeball, you have tenons layers, clera, and this is your upper fornix and conjunctiva, and this is your cornea. So, layer by layer, we can see. So, first comes your skin. So, what is the importance of skin in the orbit and the lid? The skin is very elastic, right? And it is very fine in texture and it is one of the thinnest skin of the human body. And then comes your subcutaneous areolar tissue. 
this comes your subcutaneous areolar tissue so why this is important this ratio because it is very loose and contains no fat it is thus easily readily distended by edema or blood that is why after injury or something you have like balloon like eyes the upper lid but when it goes off again the lid becomes normal it comes back to normal okay so you have skin it is the thinnest skin and then comes your subcutaneous tissue which is very loose and contains no fat so this importance is in periocular edema or periorbital edema and periorbital ecchymosis so i told you see how much loose space you have so you get the blood loose tissue so blood and uh, this is allergic edema which contains fluid edematous fluid and this is blood coming to the muscular layer you have muscular layer which has orbicularis muscle and forms an oval sheet across the eyelids so you see this is the orbicularis muscle which helps in closing okay and it has three portions the orbital portion the palpebral portion and the lacrimal portion this is the orbital portion what is palpebra palpebra is lids right so over the lids is your palpebral portion and here comes your lacrimal sac so this is the lacrimal portion so this is the muscular layer which is divided into three orbital portion septal portion and lacrimal portion so what is the function it closes the lids see how it is situated it is situated in a round fashion right so when it is contracting it will close the lid okay and what is the blood supply um, nerve supply is your zygomatic branch of the facial nerve okay zygomatic branch so facial nerve so what happens in facial palsy you have um you you have facial nerve paralysis and this is in unable unable to close right so you have whenever it is not closing you have lag of thalamus and dryness and all the other complications occurs so as i say to lag of thalamus so see uh, the orbicularis is not functioning and hence you cannot close the eyelids properly so the lids are not closing properly and hence you have seen open the lids and whenever the lids are open the cornea gets dried out and hence there is uh, corneal ulcer or corneal um, exposure keratitis which is happening next is after orbicularis muscle you have levator palpebrae superiorus so lps so what is the important action of uh, lps it raises the upper lid and uh, blood supply is by the oh, sorry nerve supply is by your oculomotor nerve so what will happen if you have a uh, oculomotor nerve palsy you have cannot raise the upper lids right and your ptosis will happen ptosis will happen okay so so this is one more cross section as a, as i already told this is the cross section of view so you have a eyebrows and a lps action you can see the levator palpebris uh, palpebrae muscle You can see the LPS muscle here coming here from behind into from the muscle bone in front. It comes and gets inserted into your lid, upper lid, right? It gets comes and inserted into your upper lid. So whenever it will help to raise the lid. So when this affected, it will again it cannot raise the lid. So the lids will uh, ptosis or the lids will come down, which we call it as upper lid ptosis. Next layer is your submuscular areolar tissue. 
right so once again after below the muscles you have areolar tissue which consists of nerves and vessels lie in this layer this is also in connective tissue layer therefore whenever you are giving anesthetized injection this is given in this plane okay mm. this is given in this Then next layer is your fibrous layer. So fibrous layer consists of, uh, so you can see the tarsal plate. Okay, tarsal plate is a connective tissue. So it forms the framework of the legs and it consists of two parts, which is called the central tarsal plate and the septum orbital. This is the central tarsal plate and this is the septum orbital. So this comes in your fibrous layer. So this leaves the framework of the legs or otherwise, uh, shape to the legs, okay. Then finally comes your layer of non-striated muscle. So what is your non-striated muscle? You have Muller's muscle. So this is your levator muscle, which is striated muscle. And this is your smooth muscle, which is your Muller's muscle. So it consists of the palpebral muscle of Muller, which lies deep to both uh, septum orbital in both the legs. Then comes your conjunctiva. So conjunctiva is the part which lines the legs. Um, it's called palpebral conjunctiva. You have two conjunctiva, right? One is palpebral conjunctiva and the other is uh, bulbar conjunctiva. So whichever is uh, covering the palpebrae. Palpebrae is the Lids. So, whichever is covering the lids, it is called the palpebral conjunctiva and this is called the bulbar conjunctiva. Again, it consists of palpebral conjunctiva. We divide it into three parts. One is marginal, the other is tarsal and the other is orbital. So, once again, you have skin, subcutaneous tissue, and striated muscle layer, submuscular area of tissue. And fibrous layer, and finally, your layer of monstrated muscle fibers, and then finally, is your conjunctiva. Coming to the glands of the lids, we have Maybobian glands, and then you have glands of Z's and glands of Mole, and accessory lacrimal glands of Wolfram. So these are all the other glands. You can see the Maybobian glands, see how many are present in the upper lid and lower lid. Then you have lacrimal, accessory lacrimal glands and glands of wolf ring and uh, other small, small lacrimal glands. So usually it is arranged vertically, placed in the stroma of the tarsal plate. Usually it is 30 to 40 in the upper lid, whereas it will be lesser numbers, which is 20 to 30 in the lower lid. Actually, what is these? These are modified sebaceous glands, and uh, I already told the ducts open at the lid margin, which you can see as small pores at the lid margin. So, you can see in this uh, picture, nicely gives your gland openings. So, when these gland openings are obstructed, you will get chalazion. You can see the swelling, cardiolum, and chalazion whenever these gland openings are obstructed. So what is the clinical thing? Whenever you are doing a calasion incision and to retouch or anything like that, you should not do horizontal incision because horizontal incision will cut most of the glands. Only you have to put vertical incision and it also causes blepharitis. Okay. So glands of C's or the, C, the sebaceous glands and these open into the follicles of the eyelashes. Coming to the glands of small, these are modified sweat glands situated near the hair follicles. Uh, they open into the hair follicles or ducts of these glands, but they do not open directly into the skin surface or elsewhere. And uh, next is the accessory lacrimal glands of opening. These are the accessory lacrimal glands. These are present near the upper border of the tarsal plate. And you can see the lacrimal gland, which is uh, present in the suprolateral portion of the orbital wall. Coming to the blood supply, uh, it is supplied by arteries. Blood supply is lacrimal artery, ophthalmic artery, medial and lateral palpebral artery.
they anastomos that is the two arches anastomos each on the upper and lower lid forming the marginal arterial arcades usually it is situated 2 mm away from the upper lid margin and 4 mm away from the lower lid margin and you also have an additional superior arterial arcade okay. this is again to demonstrate that arterial arcades you have marginal and peripheral arcades In lymphatics, you have pre-tarsal and post-tarsal lymphatics. From the lateral half, it drains into the pre-auricular lymph nodes, and from the medial half, into the submandibular lymph nodes. Coming to the nerves, we have facial nerve and oculomotor nerve, which supplies the LPS muscle, and sympathetic fibers supplies the Muller's muscle. Sensory nerve is by the trigeminal nerve mainly. Coming to congenital anomalies, finally you have a crypt of thalamus, which is like a you have does not have formed eyelids at all. Okay, and then what is ablephron? Ablephron, you don't have lids; it is open. Okay, then microblephron is small size; the lid is very small size, and neuroblephron, which are increased palpebral fissure. So. Anteloblephron is the addition between upper lid and lower lid. Coloboma is the you have defect between the upper lid and lower lid. Epicanthus you have fold of tissue medially, and uh, one more is congenital ptosis. As I told, upper lid comes down. Right. We will see the uh, other things, other diseases of eyelids in the next class. Okay.